let's talk about the methods. So typical methods for bridge demolition, probably the most popular is mechanical demolition. Do you know what I mean? Using breakers or similar with on excavators. Second most popular, I would say, is probably cutting and lifting. Um, and then you're down into the realms of explosive demolition, which isn't very common for bridges, particularly in this country. Uh, and probably becoming more popular is removal with SPMT or similar. Uh, SPMT being self-propelled modular transporter. Often you'll use a combination of all of these, well, not explosives, but you'll use a combination of different methods to approach the demolition. So let's start off with methods of cutting and really and um, cutting sections free on a structure. A good starting point for that is diamond wire sawing. So as you can see there on the right, that is a diamond wire saw. That chain there or chain the uh, wire there is what does is what cuts the concrete. So it's got a series of links on it, and the links are diamond encrusted. So um, not diamonds that are mined, diamonds that are grown in a lab generally, that are bonded onto the wire, and that wire is an abrasive and jet basically wears away the concrete. It'll cut the reinforcement, it'll cut many different materials if you wanted to, typically more, more often used on concrete. Downsides with it is generally water runoff, though you can do dry wire cutting, it's just not very common. Floor saws, that is a floor saw there. So as you can picture, you've got a big steel disc and again, that's got diamonds on the tip, and that is what cuts the concrete by the abrasive action. Again, generally you need water, which means slurry runoff. <laughs> and it's pretty much as it looks. You start the blade and you cut along the structure. So that's well suited to where you've got a nice flat deck or something similar, where you can just work your way along cutting. Crack saw is quite similar, except instead of being mounted on uh, wheels, it's mounted on a track which you can see there, they fix the track in place and then they run the saw along it. When you're dealing with steel, wrought iron, then you start talking about burning, providing there's no constraints on burning on site. So that's the simplest way to cut through um, steel sections is with a gas axe. Obviously, you've got to be able to get close enough to do it and you've got to consider the position of safety for the people who are doing the works. Um, thermic lance. I don't think we've used it when we've been cutting bridges, but you could do particularly well suited to burning things that are um, quite heavy sections. So a thermic lance, as you see there, is a, is a steel tube generally, uh, which has oxygen running through it. And then you have um, either magnesium or iron or aluminium rods inside it, and you set fire to it. And that will literally burn its way through anything. It could be three foot thick steel but it will burn its way through. It will just take a long time. So if you're, it, it will cut pretty much any material as well, but generally used for processing large, uh, thick sections of steel. Uh, cold cutting, so that might be recip saws. That might be through using um, other handheld saws. The blade technology has come on a long way with this, with these now. And um, we've worked on a number of schemes, large schemes, not necessarily bridges, but things like uh, gas holders, where you're not allowed to do any hot cutting on the site because of the potential for fires. And with the modern tools and the modern blades, you can rip through steel very quickly, cold cutting. So it's not one to be instantly discounted. It can be quite a powerful tool if required. Breakers. So that's a hydraulic breaker. You can see there the tip of the, um, the breaker is forced into the concrete at high pressure, and that fractures the concrete of the reinforcement. Uh, water jet cutting, um, I don't know why I didn't put it here, but you can also use a muncher to do the same thing. So instead of propelling a steel breaker tip at the concrete, you crush the concrete. I, I do cover it later, but I should have shown it here as well. Water jet cutting, again, not very common, but can be used at very high pressure water. Generally, an abrasive mixed into the water can be used to cut sections, and that can cut pretty much any material. Obviously, you get a lot of water runoff, and you've got to have a high-pressure system on site, but it's all achievable if the constraints require. Hydro demolition, not typically used for large-scale demolition, but if you've got to keep part of a structure, and in particular, you need to expose the reinforcement, as is being shown here, you can use hydro demolition to, to basically wash the concrete away with high-pressure water, exposing the reinforcement. So you can then tie the new structure into it. 
explosives. You've probably all seen this in the news um, a few days back. This is in Baltimore where they um, used cutting charges to dislodge part of the bridge structure that's still stuck on the boat. Um, we don't tend to use cutting charges much for bridge demolition in the UK. They do in America quite a lot more than we do. Um, I don't think we tend to use cutting charges very much, maybe for industrial demolition, like power power stations and things, but not generally bridges. Um, we do, however, use explosives for demolition of highways, bridges uh, in the UK. This is one from uh, A38. Uh, this was Gilpins again, where they chose to um, use explosives to drop the deck. You'll see a video of this later. Uh, so it could then be processed with machines. And there we're using the explosives to fragment the um, the concrete around the tops of the columns before, and that allowed the bridge to then drop down to the road protection below. So methods for lifting, you can obviously use cranes, whether that be a crawler, mobile. Um, you can use an excavator with a grab attachment. They can be very, very useful for dismantling structures. Uh, you can also use an excavator to lift as it's as there. So that's been pre-cut uh, with track saw, I believe, from memory, and then core holes through it, and then lifting the concrete sections out. SPMTs can be used for lifting sections of bridges out, and it's becoming more popular, particularly if you can reuse the SPMTs to lift the new deck back in. Uh, barges. Or can often be used um, to move bridges around uh, and to demolish them if the constraints suit and you've got a suitable body of water. Uh, strand jacks for lowering sections. Um, again, I don't think I've ever done a job where we'd use a strand jack to demolish a bridge, but it's possible. Just we haven't done it. So um, jacking itself, which is, you can see the jack units there. So that could be used to raise the deck up, then move the, the deck and then lower it back down again. So each of those cassettes there uh, can be, so it lifts it or lowers it, then you can take a cassette, cassette out and then you just repeat the process or the opposite to lift again. Uh, and sometimes you use a combination of both. So you can see here that this bridge is, um, on this end it's on SPMTs, on that end it's on the barge still, and it's been slid off it. So, uh, yeah, sometimes a combination. For traditional demolition works, uh, you can use a shear, as you can see there. Uh, right machine with a big shear on it is a site to behold. The, 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 the section size they can physically cut through is quite impressive. And on this job here, I think they were running a, I don't think I've got a picture of it, they ran a 70-ton machine with the 15-ton shear on the uh, boom, direct on the boom here, and that crushed and went through the top cord of that um, bridge without any trouble whatsoever. Whereas if you were using a smaller shear like that, you would struggle somewhat to crush the, um, or to, to break through the top cord of that cross. A muncher, it's not a really good picture because it's cloudy, but there's a muncher on the end there that's physically crushing the concrete deck. Breakers we've touched upon earlier which we've touched upon earlier for traditional